Okay, number 60 from the section on implicit differentiation. The question is to find the equations of the tangent lines to an ellipse passing through a specific point. Okay, so as I outlined in class, it's useful to put this ellipse in standard form just so we can get a good sketch. So I'm dividing through by 36 so that it is now in standard form and this shows me the length of the major and minor axis of uh, the ellipse. So I have out here at 6 and up here at 3 and then here's the drawing of the ellipse. Not very good, but there you go. And uh, let's plot the point 12, 3 as well. That's right here. And again, as, as discussed in class, um, we can already see one tangent line pretty clearly, which is the line y equals 3. So we basically already have one of our answers, but the other tangent line is going to be a little bit more difficult to figure out. So let me try and get a rough sketch of what that would look like. Okay, there you go. Let's pretend it passes through that point and is tangent to the ellipse. Okay, so I'm expecting another positive slope, or I'm sorry, I'm, I'm expecting a positive slope for the equation of the second tangent line. So um, again, as outlined in class, the way that we're going to set this up is making a sequence of two observations about um, this mystery tangent line. Uh, so let me go ahead and mark a point of tangency where the tangent line hits the ellipse and I'll make a couple observations about that point together with um, the you know information about the slopes. So the first observation is at the point of tangency the derivative of y with respect to x on the curve on the ellipse since the derivative gives the slope of the tangent line to the curve that should be equal to well the slope of that tangent line which should coincide with the um, result of computing the rise over run in between this point 12 3 and the point the mystery point x y so this should equal the slope sort of between x, y, and um, 12, 3. So that's observation number one. Uh, observation number two is that the point, the mystery point, lies on the ellipse. Okay, so I mean this equation right here says that the x and y coordinate of this point are related by this equation. So it's, it's another piece of just algebraic information about the mystery point that will become useful in, in solving the problem. Okay, so let me go ahead and translate the first observation into math from words. So in order to compute the derivative of y with respect to x, I'm going to want to um, use implicit differentiation to get dy dx. And I'll just go to this original equation to do that. So I'll perform a derivative with respect to x on both sides. And keep in mind how your evaluating your implicit derivatives. Uh, a first step is not to write dy dx equals something. All right, If you're given a function explicitly, then you know sort of writing the answer for the derivative can start like this, dy dx equals or f prime of x equals y prime equals. Um, but that sort of doesn't come until later when you're doing an implicit derivative. So um, the dy dx will pop out as part of this computation. Okay, so I am um, using the method of implicit differentiation. Anytime I encounter a y term, I'm interpreting y as a function of x, and so I'm in many instances applying the chain rule. Okay, so I interpreted y as a function of x here. It was being squared, so I applied chain rule. Derivative of the outside using power rule, leave the inside alone times the derivative of the in inside, which is dy dx. Okay, this allows me to solve for dy dx. So I get, um, I guess, minus 2x over 8y 
So this is negative x over 4y. And now we have this like typical implicit derivative, which is a, you know, a formula that can be used to crank out slopes of tangent lines at any point on the ellipse. Notice how it depends on x and y. All right, so that was part one. Well, almost, we have uh, the observation one filled out. I've got the derivative with, you know, of y with respect to x for any point on the ellipse. Now, the other part, um, slope between x, y, and 12, 3, is just your delta y over de delta x um, slope computation. So let me put that off to the side, and then we'll set up, um, so this is the derivative And over here, I'll put the, just the slope between x, y, and 12, 3. So rise over run. Now I can set up an equation, because I observed on the picture that that slope should be equal to the derivative at the mystery point. So I get my first equation from this, negative x over or y equals y minus 3 over x minus 12. And then, as observed before, I'm going to pair this with the other information I have about the mystery point, which is that it, it lies on the ellipse. I think I might write it um, in the original form. And you, you'll actually see why in a sec. Okay, so the point lies on the ellipse. So this is two equations, right, in two unknowns. And so if I just, you know, solve these simultaneously, hopefully I can get a value for x and a value for y. And I should expect to get sort of more than one answer because um, this system is good enough to detect uh, any point that sort of satisfies these two observations, namely that um, the tangent, that the point is a point of tangency, um, and lies on the ellipse, okay? So um, let me just proceed with the algebra. I'm going to go ahead and um, get rid of the, the fractions over here. So I'll multiply both sides by x minus 12 and multiply both sides by 4y, and that leaves me with, let's see here, negative x squared plus 12x on the left and 4y squared minus 12y. And then I'm not going to do anything to the second equation just yet. Um, I do notice that if I bring um, the negative x squared over to the right, so I add x squared to both sides, and then I also move the negative 12y over to the left, a familiar expression appears. Watch. So I'm going to manipulate the first equation just as I said. So I'll have a 12y plus 12x on the left. And then on the right, I'm going to have four, I think some technical difficulties here. Mm, okay, I'll have four y squared plus x squared. And four y squared plus x squared is exactly what I have on the left-hand side of the second equation. So with that observation that this expression is the same as this expression, this allows me to um, deduce that 12y plus 12x is actually equal to 36. So I'm imagining coming down here and replacing this expression with what it's equal to. So I get that this gives me um, 12y plus 12x is 36. Let me clean this up a bit. I'll just divide through by a 12. Um, and maybe I'll move the x to the other side, so that'll give me um, y equals 3 minus x. Okay, I didn't quite, I mean, if you're lucky when you sort of make your first algebraic observation of how to combine your equations, you might get one of the unknowns completely solved for. I don't have that um, just yet, but I think I can take this back to maybe the second equation again and um, reduce it to a one variable equation. So, like, I have y in terms of x now, so I could use... Um, either of the equations to swap out a y in terms of x. So that's what I'll do right now. I'm just going to go ahead and take the y equals 3 minus x and swap it out um, in this equation here. So that leaves me with x squared plus 4, 3 minus x squared 
equals 36. This is now a quadratic in x, so I'm just going to put it into a good form and, and try and figure out um, what the solutions are. All right, so we've got 9 minus 6x plus x squared here. So, okay, multiplying things out, I'm going to have x squared. I've got 36 minus 24x plus uh, 4x squared. Subtracting 36 from each side and gathering like terms, I guess I've got 5x squared minus 24x equals 0. And this means that, oops, factoring out an x, I see two solutions for x, the x-coordinate of the point of tangency. And this is kind of what I expected, right? I've got x equals 0. I knew about that x-coordinate all along. That's the, the x-coordinate of this point, 0, 3. And the other one, I expected x to be some like positive number less than 6. So, I mean, what I have right here is 24 divided by 5. Yeah, that's even a little bit less than 5. Um, so let me go ahead and take these two, like the x-coordinates of these two points of tangency and figure out um, what the corresponding y coordinates are. So I'll have these you know, two points completely. Um, the question is about equations of tangent lines, so I'm going to need to take that information and then information about slope to build the equation of the tangent line just, just as usual, okay? So in order to figure out the y-coordinates of the points of tangency, I'm just going to use this observation up here that um, the y-coordinate is 3 minus the x-coordinate. So um, Let's obviously just do that with a 24 over 5. If I have x is 24 over 5, then y is 3 minus that. 3 is 15 over 5, so I've got 15 minus 24 over 5, and that is like negative 9 over 5. This is a negative y-coordinate. Um, this isn't a surprise as well, because if you look up here, the y-coordinate of this point is definitely below the x-axis, right? So the fact that it's negative is reasonable. It's also like less than negative 2, which is also, I guess, pretty reasonable. Um, I don't mean less than, I mean in magnitude it's it's less than 2 below the x-axis, which means, you know, it's it's not like extending past the um, you know bottom of this ellipse. So I, it's a reasonable number, I say. Okay, so, so I know the points of tangency completely now. The points of tangency, two of them, tangency. Pen is crapping out. I'm not sure why. Um, I knew about 0, 3 in the beginning, and now I've just, you know, reinforced that. And then the new one that I found is 24 over 5, negative 9 over 5. So now I'm ready to report the two um, tangent lines. Okay, line number one is a horizontal line at y equals 3. That is the answer, I knew, again, I knew about from the beginning. Um, the second tangent line goes through this point and has some slope, right? Um, I can glance up at my work here. I can just remember where this all started. Um, the, you know, now I know the coordinates of this point, so the slope of the tangent line is the um, slope between those two points. So I'm just going to do, you know, a rise over run computation here. Um, of course, the slope of this line is also the value of this derivative evaluated at the point. Um, I think it looks a smidge easier to plug it into that, so I'm just going to do that instead. So um, let me copy my derivative down at the bottom so I can use it. Okay, so I know that the slope at this point of tangency is given by dy dx evaluated at the point. So I'm going to remind you about evaluating using Leibniz notation and plugging this point into the derivative formula, and that will give me the slope. So I take negative the x-coordinate over 4 times the y-coordinate. So the one-fifths cancel, um, I got a factor of 4 that I can cancel as well, leaving me with a 6 on top and a 9 on bottom. Did I do that right? Let's see. 5s go away. Yep, I think that's okay. So this is a positive slope, which I was expecting as well. Then the equation of the tangent line um, using point-slope form would be y minus a negative nine-fifths equals, well, let's reduce that, obviously, 3 two-thirds x minus 24 over 5. Okay, so here are my two tangent lines, y equals 3 
and this one right here.